we're gonna play a nice little training game again and this time it's all about making paper airplanes this one is really useful as an introduction onto value stream mapping and at the end of this video i will show you how to incorporate a plane into your value stream map hello i'm tom welcome to my channel where we talk about continuous improvement in an industrial setting and in that setting value stream mapping can be really powerful if used well so often you will see that you would like to train some people in this and then if you have such a training it always is better to include a training game to drive home the points to get people to link it up and of course to you know manage the energy in the room a bit a game always breaks up the monotony of your training and gets people on board again and what i often see is that people find value stream mapping to be quite difficult and abstract but when you do it with this paper airplane folding game and then get into the concepts it suddenly becomes easier people understand what just happened in the game and can translate that to paper so that's what we'll be discussing in this video so to run this game you don't need a lot of stuff uh, but a couple of things uh, will have you looking a bit further than your regular office shop and that is it would be very nice if you have a die with different colors on it of course you can do this with a regular six-sided die and just say one and two is blue three and four is red but it's more visual if you get the actual die and people like it because you don't see them that often a couple of markers in the correct colors that are on your die also not so difficult to get but in the usual package you only get red blue and green and many of the die have uh, purple or yellow on it so that's always nice to have the correct markers but this is a, a one-time cheap purchase for your continuous improvement or training department and then to actually play the game you just need lots of paper and uh, this of course is available in any factory office supply shop whatever so to do this game you need to set it up once and then you can do it lots of time to great effect so let's go over the setup of the game quickly okay uh, it is a group game you want uh, teams competing against each other and each group has a number of people in it they all have a role from this airplane production factory there is one special role and that is the client person at the end of the line if you have enough non-trainees in your group to staff these client roles with trainers or, or managers or people that are uh, not really following the training not in the groups that would be very nice because they have a bit of a special role and they are part of the game not so much part of the teams of contestants now the client uh, will roll the die and will demand airplanes from the factory uh, and he determines the pace and he determines what is good and not good so they play a more involved role in the game side of this game and all the other roles are really the team of each airplane factory and this factory has three production stations one quality station and then a number of extras so to say we have logistics we have a manager we have a continuous improvement expert you can add on these roles but they are not required it gives you some flexibility also in how to set up the game but if you do not have so many people you can cut back a bit on these positions then we give those people in the factory a bit of time to check the instructions play around with the stuff they got and we go and instruct the client and the most important instructions for the client are be hard on quality so um, if the star and we'll get to that but if the star on the airplane is not good or the folds are not good it is a defect we want a couple of defects and we want to put pressure on another couple of important things for the for the client have to do with the game aspects the things you want to teach uh, but often i'd also tell them if the factory people are very client oriented so they come to you with questions suggestions uh, they ask in advance if maybe some different processes are possible you can be quite lenient with that as long as they then perform up to their promises and new standards yes you can accept a couple of changes if one of the other groups afterwards complains about this you just tell them look they went to their client they discussed new terms this is what you do in business so it's a learning point now let's go to the stations in the factory so you have the first operator who takes a sheet of paper folds it in twain and he has to put a nice little star on the paper now this is pretty difficult to do especially like i'm doing right now just drawing a star by hand because what you get is that um, the corners are not really touching uh, maybe it gets a bit over half of the paper uh, and to get a nice straight star well as you saw it um, 
I cannot do it by hand as well. Then station one is done. It goes to operator number two, who has to make some folds. And he makes only the first fold on the front of the plane. So that's one fold in the front and one fold on the other side of the plane. And that's all he does. And this goes to station number three. So station number three gets the once folded and colored plane and he makes the additional folds that will actually make it a flying plane. So these are two folds on either side. Now what you already see here is that I folded through my star. Remember what I told you about station number one? It's very difficult to get the star in the correct order. Because for my feeling, I was already putting a nice small star that's slightly smaller than half of the paper. And this is not enough. You have to make it even smaller. Now what you also see is that this process takes a bit longer than station number two. And this is a big part of the game. So that's the end result of station number three. Then we go to the quality department. What they will do is they will check the star is it only on the bottom half in this case no this is a defect the customer should definitely throw this away as well and they formally do a flight check it flies wonderful now what you will see is that all of these paper airplanes they will fly that's not the problem it's the star and how nice and sharp the folds are and then it goes into our warehouse ready for the customer to get it now what you will see happening is that there will be lots of production of paper planes and uh, the stars will not be very nice and um, when you build up some inventory and you should because uh, this whole process takes longer than 30 seconds so the factories need to build up inventory otherwise they're going to lose the game anyway the right color will not move through your factory the customer might just get three green planes after each other and you were building all the colors so you don't have so many green ones especially not ones that actually pass quality control we play a five minute round and that means you get 10 orders from your client to deliver an airplane. And the scoring system that I propose is that each airplane that makes it on time and up to specs to the customer will get you a thousand dollars. Each airplane that you scrap will cost you $250 and for all the scrapped airplanes and work in progress so any folded piece of paper that you see either in the bin at the quality department or somewhere on the table you subtract another $100. It is relatively cheap to have inventory but it still does cost you money. And then you ask the big question. We're gonna play another round. What would you like to improve in your factory and in your processes? Now a bit of a spoiler here. What they really need to do with this factory is to move around the operator places, so redistribute the work centers and the work, and to get this color painting to the end of the line. But we don't really want them to do this in the first round yet. There are also other things that they can improve in the game. For dramatic effect, it's best to time it like that. So what you tell the groups is that, look, management is okay with letting you change a couple of things, but we're not going to move around machines and work centers and invest in really rebuilding the factory. You, as a continuous improvement team, first have to show that you can optimize the processes and first get the quick wins. I know it might sound a bit cheesy, but really it all fits into the spirit of the game. So you tell them, optimize the current process, go talk to your client, go do things, but this basic setup still remains. But you can work on standardization, they can work on inventory control, maybe they want some Kanban places on the table, they can work with the quality, they can work with the client. There are lots and lots of things they can do to improve this pretty poor process. Then we play a second round with basically the same rules. So again, there is a four minute startup period, the factory can have some inventory if they want to. And then at some point you say, okay, all the customers are now going to throw the first die and we start our five minute clock again. We've got our 10 new orders coming in. Or if they've paid attention, Maybe some clients will throw more often or not as often because it's better for that factory. Now, they will again, you know, be producing the airplanes, lots of fun. They will get a new score. Uh, it will go a lot better already, but they will also again, you know, have improvement ideas. So we go to a third round, but now between the second and the third round, we tell them you made some nice improvements. Now you can actually also do something with the factory layout. And this is the point where we expect that most of the groups will redistribute the work. They will probably put tasks in such an order that every 
operator has the same amount of work so that it takes the same amount of time uh, that they put this coloring part to the end of the line and what i very often see also is that they say we need you know the team leader to also really do something or the quality person can actually do some of the work yes why not discuss it with your labor union and go do it what i see some of the groups doing and it's really really nice if you have a training where one of the groups does it and uh, some of the other groups do not is that some double a station so they say well we've got this folding area at the beginning then we have two stations making the final fold and putting the star on because it's actually easier to do it when you already see the line something like that so that you sort of split into a two-piece flow and go back into one piece again that is really nice if you see this happening in your training and be sure to use it afterwards in the discussion and your value stream mapping because those are the creative ideas that we also need our people to have in our real practice we are done now we have a real winner so the third round is the one that really counts it's a game people are competitive they, they like somebody to win so we compare the scores and announce a winner but then we go into a bit of evaluation about what did you improve what worked what didn't work after the game is over the groups will be more open to share their brilliant ideas because in the previous round of improvements they were not as willing to share stuff with their opponents so now we have an open discussion and the things you can really get out of this game in the discussion with the group uh, cost of inventory uh, standardization line balancing so who has how much work getting this product differentiation moved to the end of the line factory layout the importance of batches maybe a kanban system if you use that you can sort of force it into the game if you want to maybe some groups come up with it themselves these are very nice concepts and again when you are doing a training game you want to make it a bit specific to the topics you want to give to your group so for instance if you are rolling out concepts of inventory management and kanban at your factory you want to put these things into the paper plane game so you can make pieces of paper with a number of planes drawn on them uh, decrease it from round one to two to three add it onto the game when needed if you do not really focus on kanban at this stage of your training leave it out because it will take away from the strength of the game so every time that you play this game with a group think a bit about your audience that is the one big thing i want to give you for any training game that you do, make sure that the material from your training is in it. Leave out where possible stuff that has too much to do with other concepts. Now, for those of you who just want to play this airplane game, hit the like button right now and go play the game. For those who want to link this to value stream mapping, stay tuned for a translation of how to put this paper plane factory into a value stream map. Now for this, I do assume that you already know a bit about value stream mapping. There is quite a lot of content on youtube if you would like me to explain it in more detail please drop me a comment ask for it i'll be happy to make a bit more in-depth videos about value stream mapping this is going to be a bit high over but what can we see from the game we just played and put into an actual value stream map so we use it as an example in a value stream mapping training so one of the key concepts that you want to teach uh, with value stream mapping is to go from a current state through a future state to the ideal state well we've got the three rounds in the paper plane game it's not for nothing and we also see a lot of process problems that we put in the game on purpose things like the load leveling the product differentiation being at the start of the process uh, difficult quality stuff this all gets back into your value stream mapping now the best way to explain this value stream mapping is to just do it with them so you draw your box of the first station where we make a fold put on the star and you ask your trainees how long did it take now hopefully somebody there was timing how long it took right so the factory manager or the continuous improvement expert if they do not know it's around 20 seconds so you put the 20 seconds there or whatever your crowd gives you then the second phase is getting the extra faults in this is usually a lot faster in my experience it's about 10 seconds then we get to the third station with all the more complex faults this will be around 30 seconds something like that and then we get to quality control which is really a breeze less than five seconds probably and then it goes to the customer so basically we've got our current state value stream map already right here don't go into all the difficulties with where were the quality problems yet we will use this for calculation of tag time and of waiting stuff so the first question of course will be what is my tag time get it from your audience and they may say all kinds of things you know, 30 which would be the correct answer the 20 from the start 5 from the end of the line maybe one minute five seconds the total time it took 
make them guess a couple of times and defend their answer. Now, then you say, okay, this is the 30 seconds because it is the one station that takes the longest to build. So if we're just moving products along, this is in the end, the speed with which stuff is coming off the line. Then we go to the inventory. For this, uh, you want to keep some records during the game already. So that's why you watch this video first, then do the game. But what you will generally see is that there will be a stack of inventory just before the third station, because of course numbers one and two have a better flow than station number three. And afterwards, there will not be a lot. Maybe a small inventory at your logistic department, which is a good thing to have for your customer to serve a bit quicker. Now, what you will see is that in this example, the time value of your inventory will be relatively easy to see because there's basically only inventory in front of the station that defines the tech times. So you multiply each plane by 30 seconds and you know how much inventory is there. At the end of the line, also be sure to ask the same question because it's interesting to see what people think that the time value of inventory at the end of the line is. The answer is also 30 seconds because it is our tech time, but many people want to give a time value to the inventory based on the direct following workstation. If you really want these value stream calculations to be the core of your training and not focus so much on the layout of the factory per se, you should tweak your game a little bit and make sure that the first operator has an easy time, for instance, only folding, then the second operator does the drawing of the star, the third operator does all the other folds, and then you got quality again, and this will make sure that you get a bit of inventory also before operator number two, because one can then operate a lot faster than number two, and you get inventory before number three, because here again, there is a difference in speed. And if your teams let that inventory build up during the game, you have got a wonderful opportunity to drive this point home, and you can talk about the cost of inventory. And then I recommend you have a bit of a discussion with your trainees on the other things we see during this process. So where are the quality problems? And also the difference between where do we spot the quality problems and where do we make them. And these are pretty basic questions, but you can then nicely put them into your value stream map showing we see them here, but we make them here. So this is the amount of process time that we lose due to this quality stuff. We see that there is this duck time. We see problems in the load balancing and don't go to round number two now jump immediately to the third round because this is what you can sell as your ideal state. So you draw out a map of probably the winning team. So make some notes during the game. And as I said, hopefully you will even have a team that makes two stations for the most difficult part. They will probably have moved the coloring. So you make this new value stream map of your basically idealized factory. You repeat the same process and again, take your people through how to build up the value stream map. And then to really drive home this value stream concept, you say, look, the ideal state, we cannot always reach directly. When we were planning our improvement projects for the first year, we were not allowed to put a lot of investments into the factory. So what was our direct future state? Round number two, make a quick drawing, people will understand. And now you've got this nice game that brings up your energy, gets people laughing, competing, and then you package all of that into a quick explanation overview of value stream mapping. What a little training gem, because as I said, most people find that value stream mapping is very difficult and abstract to understand. And now you have a little factory that they built together where they have already been thinking, applying value stream mapping concepts without even knowing it, then you bring it together and in front of their eyes, I actually advise using a flip over to do this better than doing it on a presentation. You make the value stream map and you talk them through what they have been doing based on what you write on the paper. And they will understand that with these simple drawings, it will be a lot easier to convince management, to convince people who were not directly involved in the game and in the measurement what was going on, where the problems were. And that, of course, is the power of a value stream map to get the information onto one page so that people can understand the process and make correct decisions. So as you can see, I get enthusiastic even talking about the game and explaining it to you. And that's because this is such a wonderful game to do value stream mapping stuff. So that's all I have for you in this video. I hope you liked it. Don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe if you haven't done so already. And please, please drop a comment Tell me how this went down in your training. I would love to hear it from you. Also, if you want some more explanation on value stream mapping or specific concepts here, let me know. I'll be happy to explain. As you know, 
I love explaining our continuous improvement stuff to you. But for now, I wish you the best of luck with this nice little game. And as always, enjoy the journey.